facts and information. You know what I'm saying? If you got a fucking dumb, dumb friend who watched the Alex Jones episode and all of a sudden, you know, everything in reality isn't reality. Vaccines don't work. The fucking moon is made of cheese. Water bottles have microchips in them. If you got one of those friends, just simply show them evidence. Just simply debate them on stupid shit that they say. Let your friends know that they're being dumb dumbs by believing everything that someone says, right? But when you constantly tell them that they don't have the right to say what they're saying, all you're doing is make them not only believe what they are saying more, but you're validating it to other fucking dumb dumbs out there who are going to believe ridiculous things. And at the end of the day, suppressing what they're saying doesn't even make it go away. You're not silencing that shit that they're saying. You're not making a big point against them or anything. In fact, all you're really doing now is... You're silencing the conversation on one side, on one element of it. And I mean, at the end of the day, who are you really to decide that this speech isn't the right speech? Because at that point, there is no free speech. And people are going to be like, well, there's no free speech to begin with because Spotify can air whatever it wants. Exactly. And that's why they've repeatedly defended Joe Rogan's show. You think they didn't know what they were getting into when they gave him a hundred million fucking dollars for exclusivity rights? You really think that? You believe they didn't know that Joe Rogan had a controversial guest lineup in the past? You think they didn't know that he was going to have some controversial people on again? What company puts out a hundred million dollars to one podcast and doesn't research the catalog and doesn't look into it? Spotify does not give a fuck that you're upset about this, okay? They don't care. Because at the end of the day, it's the most popular podcast in the world. It's making them a fuck ton of money. And you being upset about it does not hurt them in the slightest, okay? So with that being said, thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy, make sure to leave a like. Subscribe if you're brand new around here on the channel. Follow me over on Twitter and Twitch at Subtop. So over the last few weeks and I guess months, we've been talking a lot about the Senate committees against big tech CEOs and the effects that they might have on social media and all kinds of other different things. 2020 has been pretty unprecedented, I guess, in just how much US federal government challenge there has actually been to a lot of these tech companies. Microsoft, Google, Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Twitter, they've all basically been shelled all year, it seems like, by the Senate accusing them of monopolistic practices, antitrust, anti-competitive behaviors, all the way to even silencing political conversations. There's been a lot of pressure put on these companies by the federal government, and honestly, the reason that it's unprecedented is because it seems like it's very rare that the US government gets involved in something like this. For instance, the last major case against a technology company that the government actually really took was when Microsoft was investigated for antitrust practices back in the 1990s. So for decades now, pretty much, these companies have gotten off pretty much scot-free and allowed to be doing whatever they really want. And from that, we've seen these companies become trillion-dollar companies even and have all kinds of different power over everybody. But one thing that we're going to be focusing on in this video and that this committee hearing was really focused on is the debate on whether or not these social media platforms have the ability to influence the election, influence popular opinion, whether or not they're silencing opinions that they do not agree with as a company, and the potential outcomes that these things, if happening, could have on the American public. So... I really want to focus in on Twitter here and CEO Jack Dorsey. Now, of course, this wasn't the only person that's been focused on in the entire thing, but Twitter definitely did take a lot of the hits during this hearing. So to give you guys a little bit of backstory, one of the major criticisms against Twitter, especially from people who are more conservative, is that they believe that political opinions or, I guess, social opinions that may not be, I guess, in the majority of users' beliefs or what don't seem socially acceptable, things like that, are actually being silenced on Twitter. So, I guess, for instance, let's say you tweet out something about conservatism and ideals from that side, the right wing, I guess. There's kind of like this conspiracy slash a lot of conversation around the idea that maybe Twitter is somehow shadow banning users for coming out with these opinions or somehow taking what they're saying out of the algorithm that kind of fuels the whole website. And Twitter has even been publicly accused, basically, of trying to silence silence President Donald Trump. If you don't know, Trump actually tweeted about mail-in ballots. 
Now, if you don't know, the president is very against the idea of mail-in ballots. He's made the claims in the past that it's unsafe. There's the high risk of manipulation of voting ballots and basically has accused it of being illegitimate and other things. Now, when he did tweet this out, Twitter actually put a little banner under his tweet that gave a bunch of information about mail-in ballots and whatnot, and basically made the claim that Trump was making statements without any evidence and what he was saying was not true, okay? Now, on several other occasions, Donald Trump has tweeted, and there's been like a little notification that says like, this tweet violates Twitter's user guidelines, but we've considered it in the best interest of the general public to keep the tweet available, things like that, right? So Trump has seen this happen, and he, along with several other Republicans, have now accused, especially Twitter, of being anti-conservative. And that all kind of really came out today. Now, obviously, there's conservatives in the Senate, okay? So the whole meeting was really supposed to be about how these companies handle their online speech, people's right to free speech, and things that can involve that on their platforms. This actually included Facebook's Mark Zuckerberg, of course, Jack Dorsey from Twitter, and Sundar Pakai from Google. It was a virtual meeting, of course, and it was supposed to be focusing on a very specific subsection of a law called Section 230. Now, if you don't know anything about Section 230, it's often, it's like basically credited as being the shield of online free speech. Basically, what Section 230 does is it makes it to where companies that are hosting a website cannot be held responsible for the things said by users on their platform. So like on Twitter, Section 230 prevents Twitter from being liable if somebody goes on there and says, you know, oh, the Earth is flat or something like that. Obviously, there's a lot more harmful conspiracies than believing the Earth is flat that can be shared on social media, but with all of that being said, Section 230 was supposed to be like the point that was focused on the most here. Now, it seems like, if anything, it was more or less just some fodder to allow conservative Senate members to get some shots in at Jack Dorsey. I mean, you know, the conservatives have been accusing Twitter of being very anti-conservative. They have him right there. Now, several members of the Senate actually ended up talking to Jack Dorsey about a very recent controversial decision made by Twitter, which was actually later reversed funny enough. Now, if you don't know, there was a New York Post story about Hunter Biden. And this story basically, it, it had all of the, like, political news uh, headlines that you'd really want, right? I mean, it's right before the election, this big story comes out about Hunter Biden, very clearly paints them in a negative light, them being the Biden family, it's supposed to make them look terrible. I'm gonna be honest with you, I can't confirm the legitimacy of this New York Post article, I'm not gonna sit here and pretend that it's truth or if it's fake, because at the end of the day, I really don't know. I mean, if you want to read it and make the conclusion for yourself, you can you're totally fine to do that, I guess, but it was a very controversial story. Uh, conservatives, for instance, were taking the story and blowing it up like, ha, see, we told you, Hunter Biden is bad, Joe Biden's son's bad, it reflects on the character of Joe Biden, Trump 2020. The people on the left, of course, uh, have called into question the legitimacy of the story and whatnot. Now, Twitter basically made the decision to almost suppress this story in a way. So, of course, it kind of divulged a little bit, you know what I'm saying? They divulged a little bit with their anti-conservative bias claims and issues like this were brought up. Now, the problem is that they completely, I guess, diverted from the main topic too often, and I think that, surprisingly enough, these old fucks in Congress once again have now let these CEOs walk. Now, at the end of the day, I don't know for sure if there's any anti-conservative bias on these social media platforms. I mean, you, I think, can make the argument in some cases, maybe, but I think that some of the claims are a little bit over-exaggerated personally. I'm not saying all of them are, but I mean, definitely some of them, I think, are taken to a complete extreme. But when it comes down to it, man, if you want to make that point, there is a time and place to make that point. And sorry, a, a Senate hearing about Section 230, which is already law, I don't think is the time to do so. I mean, this is a law that really does help uphold a lot of the free speech on the internet, and it provides a lot of safeties to companies that allow them to thrive on the internet. Can it possibly be changed for the better? Yeah, of course, but there's talks about repealing it and all kinds of things. It's definitely getting spoken about on the floor. But one thing I do want to point out is that Jack Dorsey said uh, something that I completely disagree with, and I want to point this out here, okay? So he uh, basically responded to Senator Ted Cruz of Texas, who said, you know, who put you in charge of what the media can report and what the American people can hear? That was the gist of what he said. Jack Dorsey said, uh, basically, that users agree to the Twitter terms of service when they sign up, and then basically also said that Twitter did not have the ability to influence the election. 
So first and foremost, yes, you do, of course, sign up. And I've, I've been trying to tell you guys these terms of service, they are pinned against you and they're fucked up and you need to try and read them if you can. But who honestly has the time to read all these things? Yeah, you sign up for the terms of service, but that doesn't make it morally correct, okay? It doesn't make the decisions that a lot of these companies make morally correct. Not even just about possible censorship. About all kinds of different things, man. It's not right that you're basically holding people's usage of the site over their head. You know they're not going to read this shit. And then when you're shoveling the shit down their throat, you go, Oh, well, you signed up for the terms of service here. Sorry. And I mean, come on, man. Twitter doesn't have the ability to influence any elections. Are you serious? So Facebook widely has been considered able to influence elections. I mean, tens of millions of Americans were sent political ads and all kinds of things through the Cambridge Analytica scandal. They've been making the claims that Russian bots have been on Facebook trying to influence people's ideas here in the United States since before the 2016 election. But you're supposed to tell me that Twitter Twitter doesn't have the ability to influence elections. I mean, posts can get hundreds of thousands of likes and retweets, and when you count up the impressions, aka the amount of times that those tweets or stories are seen on Twitter, they can easily hit the tens of millions. I mean, come on. To pretend as if people having the ability to see something on such a mass scale doesn't have the ability to influence an election is fucking ridiculous. I mean, at the end of the day, yeah, maybe Twitter isn't directly involved in all this, but I mean, is it possible that maybe some employees at the company have biases that are being, I guess, acted out? There's a lot of fair questions on both sides, and I think that this really was just yet another shit show showing from the committee, where they actually get big tech CEOs there, right? They can actually make an example out of them, right? Because these guys are kind of fucking scumbags, you know what I'm saying? Like, they do a lot of very shady things, they do a lot of very shady shit, just literally to get richer and to have more control over your lives. And, you know, the government finally gets them in a place, in a public place, where they can actually tear them a new one, and then we get shit like this. And this is the problem on why people don't trust them to do shit, because it's like, you're very clearly showing us that we should not believe you have the ability to do anything here. Why should we? But Twitter is on the hot seat here, it seems like uh, there is finally being some questions raised by the government here in this hearing about this whole thing. At the end of the day, I think Section 230 is going to end up getting changed. It seems like there's some pretty good bipartisan, aka both sides agreement on this uh, needing changed. Both sides can't agree on how or why, which is very typical in the United States because our government's about as functional as a fucking broken faucet. So, you know, water falls out, but man, <laughs> it only goes everywhere. It's just, it's bullshit, dude. The government here sucks, and I, I can't believe that they've given themselves so many opportunities to fuck this up and successfully done it, you know? So, with that being said, thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy, make sure to leave a like, subscribe if you're brand new around here on the channel.